Hey guys, I got a great video for you today. It's how to lock your transaxle in your off-road lawnmower, lawnmower, racing mower, whatever you got. If you've got something with a differential that spins one tire at a time, chances are you can probably lock it. I've locked probably close to a dozen transaxles, or spider gears in general. I've done golf carts, go-karts, lawnmowers, you name it, I've probably locked it. Uh, I use a different method than most people use. I'm going to share that with you today and show you basically step by step what I do to lock transaxles. I've been very successful. Every transaxle I've locked is still locked and still running today. So if you guys check this video out, make sure you watch the whole thing. There's lots of tips inside. If you skip around a lot, you might miss something that's pretty important. It's not just one thing that makes your transaxle tough and able to handle abuse. It's all the little things that go into locking the transaxle and the whole process all put together. If you don't do the whole thing the right way, then chances are something's going to go wrong. So here's what we're up against. I'm not going to do a video on how to remove your transaxle. You should already know how to do that. But for all you that don't really know and you want to do it anyways, you basically pop your rear tires off, whether it's a C-clip or a bolt, unbolt your mounts right there from the transaxle to the tractor, undo your brake linkage, undo your shift linkage, undo your belt, drop the whole transaxle out and you'll have it on the ground. This is what it'll look like. This pulley's not currently attached, but to get your top pulley off, it's usually a C-clip that looks similar to this. You'll need a little C-clip remover tool, and you'll pop that sucker off. Sometimes you may need a puller to pull these pulleys off. You get your pulley off there, you got your tires off of there. You probably should get your shifting linkage off here. Once you get all that taken care of, it's probably a good idea to take this thing and clean it really good. So we got her all cleaned up. Now the best thing to do is start assessing all your nuts and bolts that you've got here. There's probably like 20 that hold this whole case together. You're probably also going to want to take apart this brake assembly. That's done by removing this bolt and this bolt here and then pulling this whole assembly off and then this whole little disc brake thing will slide off. The other thing you should notice is there's two flat headed screws right here. These hold springs in which are holding little balls that are in contact with your shift fork. When you shift back and forth and it goes click click click, the reason it goes click 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 is because of these little balls at the bottoms of these springs. So when you take this apart, you're going to want to find those two little balls and make sure you don't lose these springs and you're going to want to make sure those go back in when you put it back together. You're going to have some serious shifting problems. The other thing you're going to want to know is when you're taking apart one of these transaxles, don't just go ahead and unbolt this bolt completely, unbolt this bolt completely, and do that all the way around, because by the time you get to the last bolt, everything's going to be loose, that one bolt's going to be tight, you're going to crack the case. The better thing to do is to go around the whole case, bolt by bolt, and loosen each one, probably a turn, half a turn, something like that, on each bolt, and do that a couple of times all the way around, or try to go in a cross pattern, but as long as you go little by little for the first two revolutions or so, you should be fine and you should have relieved enough stress from the case to be able to open it. You also want to notice there's a couple of hidden bolts here, one there, one there. Sometimes there's even another one on these bottom sides. I don't see one on this transaxle, but I have seen them on others, so... Keep an eye out for those. Make sure you clean them really good and look them over really well because you don't want to start beating on this case because it's not coming apart and there's really one bolt left. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this case apart and we're going to lock this sucker. Alright, so right about now is where you're going to want your paper towels. Um, you're going to get both your hammers out here and we're going to try to open this thing up and this is going to get really messy. If it's an oil filled transmission, you should probably pop the oil plug and drain it before you do this. I probably forgot to mention that, but it goes without saying with most oil-filled things. But let's give this a try. I'm just going to pull straight up on this thing here. As you can see, mine opened up no problem. Um, but in most cases, if it didn't come up easily, you could tap on some of the hard casting parts, like on the corners. Corners are a good spot. Don't hit harder than that, um, especially with a copper hammer. Try to use a rubber if you can, um, but as you can see, mine pulled apart relatively easy. I'm also pulling it out with the input shaft attached and the shift fork attached. Okay, so here's those little ball things I was telling you about. This is the shifting linkage and the shift fork, and you can see one of the little balls right there, and the other one is actually hidden underneath. You can't see it until you shift this particular transmission, and mine are actually stuck in the shifting fork, which is great for me, but 
Make sure you look for these little balls if they happen to fall out when you're opening your case or after you open the case, you've got to find those and put them back. So now you can see what makes these transaxles tick and what makes these differentials work. So you can see I'm going to spin this shaft and that one obviously spinning the opposite direction. I'm spinning this one forward. That one's going backwards. That's because of these spider gears inside. And those are the little guys we're going to attack. So the next step is to pull this whole axle assembly, this bull gear, and these spider gears all out, and this axle too, and clean all these really, really good. So get your paper towels handy and pull these guys out. There's going to be a rubber seal here and here to keep water out. You're going to want to get those out right away. Pull these axle shafts out one by one. There's one. Is the other. I'm going to pull this bowl gear out and inside here is where we create our locker. What I do is I weld these spider gears right here to this inside pin right there. Never weld on the back side of these because that will completely ruin the mating surface that's all machined between the back of the spider gear and the inside of this bowl gear. Here we've got the long side axle shaft and the short side axle shaft with the spider gears removed. These are the C-clips that hold them on. You may have broke these trying to get the wheels off if you got the wheels off. So, you know, if you did break them, try to find them inside the transfer case before you go any further so you know you at least have them out. I'm not going to put these back in because they're chintzy, they're cheap. What I usually do is I take these and I weld them right on this nose very lightly. Well, I say lightly, but I weld them hot. But I, I try to keep it out of these grooves of this spider gear, and I weld these in right along this axle shaft, just so it never comes off ever again. Never weld on the back side, because this is a machined surface. That needs to remain as flat as possible. Only weld on the front. But now, it's time to blast everything really clean with our brake cleaner. You really only need to clean off the ends you're using. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is take these axle shafts and weld these spider gears to the ends right along that inside edge like I was talking about before. So these will never fall off again. And that will eliminate the need for these little clips. And it's the first step in the process that I use to lock my transmissions. Alright, so we got one welded there. She's still smoking. I also use a uh, old pair of jeans, slightly damp, to cover up the shafts, just so they don't get slag all over them. But here's the other one, all done. Something else I'll mention is after you finish welding these spider gears to the ends of your axle shafts, sometimes when you go to reassemble everything back into the bowl gear before you start welding and creating your locker, you'll find that you don't have enough clearance to get these butt it up against the pin in the center and what you might have to do is grind down a little bit off the ends of these axle shafts right there and sometimes it's just a very very little bit that'll keep you from being able to reassemble everything but it's not a big deal just grind those ends down and you'll be fine okay so now that we got both axle shaft spider gears welded on from both sides I got my little washers reinstalled back on there make sure you put those back on now we're gonna reassemble everything and build our locker It takes a little bit of time sometimes, so don't rush yourself. You gotta make sure you get everything meshed perfectly. Boom, right there. Okay, so now the trick is you want these two axle shafts to be completely flat. You don't want any pressure pushing these up like that because that's gonna cause a weird mesh situation and it's gonna, the whole bowl gear is gonna want to do this as you put it all back together and it's gonna cause your transfer box to explode completely. So obviously that's not a good thing. You wanna have this thing on some really level surface. I got this wood block under here just so it doesn't really move. You can see 
Obviously the differential still works as I can hold one and still spin the other. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Where we're welding is right there. But right above my fingertip, you see, right? That little smooth machine surface, right against that spidey gear, just as we did the axle shafts. But the only difference is right now, we have to weld this while it's in the transfer box. So you either want to move these gears, or just remove them completely from the transfer box, get them out of here, or cover them with those old jeans, which is what I'm going to do, just for simplicity's sake. But we're going to do a couple of tack welds on each side, one there and one over there, and then we're going to turn this whole thing over and do a tack weld there and a tack weld there. And we're going to do really hot, fat tack welds. We're not going to baby these things. All right, you can see we've got her nested basically with the wet denim. Just can see the one area I'm going to weld in there. I'm going to do it from that side probably, so this side I'm going to keep a little covered up more. But be careful doing this, guys. Okay, so I got my ground hooked up to the long axle shaft. I say again, make sure everything is seated perfectly. Pull everything, make sure it's all seated, your pole gear. Make sure that's in there good. You want everything flat and perfect, because the better job you do now, the more your transmission's gonna last. Here we go. Welding on the hottest setting with, a, I think, a wire speed of around number two. Now we're going to rotate it and do the other side. Except now we're actually locked already, but you got to be careful because you don't want to break those spot welds. We still don't want to mess anything up. Just turn the whole thing over just like that. Make sure your ground is good. Make sure everything's seated good all over again. Don't burn yourself. Let's do it again. Don't go accidentally welding your axle shafts to this pin or welding anything to the bowl gear. And don't put too much pressure twisting like this because you obviously move this whole thing. We are locked. Okay, so once you get your tack welds all done, take all the bowl gear and the axle shafts out and you'll see your newfangled locker and slag everywhere as you can see. It's all over the place on everything, but hopefully not too much got all over the place inside of your transfer case box or transaxle box here because you don't want to clean up too much in there. But if you're cleaning up the whole thing, then it'll be a good easy job for you, but I'm going to have to just clean up that one area I had exposed. But now I'm going to basically finish welding those really, really hot around that pin on both sides. And we're going to have to clean up all this hardware with the bench brush. So here's our locker all finished, all welded. As you can see, I've still got tons of slag on there. What I'm going to have to do is go through with a little flat-headed screwdriver and just pick all these little balls of slag off in the teeth. Make sure that backside is completely flat because that's got to be a nice, smooth, flat surface. Get all this slag off of here so none of it ends up in your transmission. Alright, so everything's welded, everything's been cleaned, our locker is done, the slag is all gone. When you clean your bowl gear, you definitely want to make sure you clean this edge right here really, really well. Because that edge meets these shiny edges in here. That one and that one, and you want to clean those off really good too, because that's essentially where your whole bowl gear rides. And if that's not clean, then it's going to grind away. Okay, so let's put this thing back together. Make sure you got everything all cleaned really good. Double check it. Make sure you got your two little gasket things that go on the outside edges here. Your washers and your box of disgusting rags. And a new can of grease or oil or whatever this takes. If it's oil, then you're going to have to reassemble everything first, then put the oil in. If it's grease, 
You start packing grease right now. You're going to want to grease this bowl gear all over the place on the edge before you even put it in. You can never use too much grease. On your axle shafts, you don't want to forget. Slide on your washers and slide on these little seals and then grease the crap out of it. And you might as well do the whole thing. This one too. There, she's in. And you can see I can hold one shaft and they both turn. This bull gear is now forced to turn both axle shafts simultaneously, giving you posi traction. So now we got it all greased, as you can see. Um, I put probably half of this can in there, so if you cleaned all the grease out, you're probably going to want to use the whole can. Make sure you clean off your mating surfaces on the two halves, on the top and the bottom. Right now, we're ready to go ahead and put these two halves back together. Make sure your two little balls for your shifting fork that were up there that I told you about earlier, that you found those and put those back before you do this. When you're putting these two case halves together, one thing you want to make sure is that that little sliding collar right there, that guy, is in line with that little pin, that one right there, on your shifting linkage, so you can actually shift when you put this thing back together. Hopefully, if you did everything correctly, it should just go right back together, no problem. Give the input shaft a couple of spins just to make sure that everything's meshing as you're putting it back together. Push down on it, spin it, should all be good. Now, we're gonna put all these little bolts back in. All right, so once you get the bolts all hand tightened down, it's probably a good time to check and make sure everything's still happy. Now one thing you can know is that sometimes when you put these transaxles back together after you lock them that this pulley will be a little bit harder to spin. That's usually pretty normal. It happens on a lot of transaxles I've locked and usually they'll wear themselves in. What you do is you put the transaxle back in the tractor and run it in first gear for a few minutes and then slowly increase your gears and eventually it'll work itself in perfectly fine. My Murray was the same way when I did it two or three years ago. But now that the bolts are all hand tight, you can go ahead and tighten them all down pretty snug, not super snug because it is aluminum and you want to go in a cross pattern like I told you before you don't want to go all the way around in one motion you want to you know maybe do these two do these two do the couple in the middle and then you know the corners just to kind of evenly tighten the case down and do it little by little just like you unscrewed the case but after you're done doing that and everything's all bolted back together you can put your input pulley on put your shift linkage back on put your brake stuff back on, throw it back in your tractor, hook it back up, put the wheels on, and enjoy your new lock transaxle. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching my video, you guys. Don't forget to rate it up if this helps you. And subscribe, because I'm always making how-to videos and how to do cool stuff like this, so you never know when something awesome is going to pop up. So thanks for watching, you guys. See you later.